Income tax 2022-2023, itemized deductions, taxes you paid, software example problems. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040 populated using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. But you can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point as usual, we got the single filer, Mr. Anderson, no dependents. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it we've got the w2 income 100,000, the 12,950 standard deduction to start with 87,050 taxable income mirroring that in our excel worksheet income tax formula 100,000 12,950 87,050 page two calculating the tax at the 14,774 15,000 withheld gets us to the 226 and we see that down here in our formula, but our major focus, my major focus will be on the calculation of the taxable income as we look at the itemized deductions and the taxes. So we're gonna go back up to page one. Let's open up the itemized deductions. That's gonna be the schedule A. Every time we think about the schedule A, remember that we first wanna think we gotta clear the standard deductions before they're beneficial, the things that clear or usually push people over are the home, owning the home. Why? Because then you've got the mortgage interest and then you've got the property taxes related to the home. And then once that's included, the other big thing that could push people over is the state taxes that they're going to be paying uh, because, and that might include, uh, and that'll also be bigger for states that have a higher uh, tax rate such as like California and New York, right? So you can get fairly significant state taxes as well as income levels go up. So you can see here by default, it's basically calculating on the tables for the sales tax. The software is quite useful to kind of do that calculation. If you're doing the sales tax, note that that's nowhere near by itself enough for us to be able to take the itemized deductions because if I go to the 1040, then we have to be clearing as a single filer that 12,950. If we were married, it'd be 25,900. Let's imagine they own the home and add the two big items. Let's add mortgage interest and property taxes, the taxes on the home being one of the items we're focused in on here. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna say, all right, schedule A. Let's say we're gonna have deductions for the schedule A and they will be, the deductions for A will be, I'll add the interest here. Let's just say it was 14,000 and then we'll go to the property taxes and I'm going to add the property taxes. I'm just making up numbers here for the principal residence. I'm going to say is, let's just say uh, 4,000. Okay. So then I'm going to go back on up and say the forms. Then if I go look at my forms, the schedule A is now being populated and it's pulling over not the standard deduction because our itemized deductions are adding up to 1917 over the 12,009 single filer. It wouldn't be enough to clear the 25,900 if married. Let's take a look at that schedule A now. So the, the mortgage interest is a significant factor helping to pu push us over. Once we're over that threshold, then the taxes could also be a significant factor. And one of the major components of the taxes is going to be the real estate taxes if they own the home the second major component is going to be the state taxes that they use to fund the general activities of the state which is chosen by the state either as an income tax or a sales tax type of system so this four thousand we're imagining where would we get that we would we would get it from possibly 
uh, if the the mortgage payments that were being made on the form 1098. So we would expect, for example, to get the form 1098, which will report the amount of interest that was paid on the mortgage or loan. And sometimes the payments that we're making were, were they packaged it together so that they're also that company, the financial institution is going to be paying some of the payments that you make to them, to the principal of the loan, to the interest, which will be reported here and for the property taxes. And then they'll generally give you that information as well but it's not required that that is the case so if you don't get that information from the financial institution for the property taxes but you know that they own a home then you're you're going to have to definitely get the information for the property taxes because they must have them almost you know everywhere basically has property taxes even though you have different states the property taxes is a pretty universal uh type of thing throughout the entire country of the united states so you want to be asking for the property taxes sometimes they're paid in like a staggered kind of format like twice a year they might be paid once a year but often they're paid uh, twice a year generally we are on a cash based system here so the payments that were actually made in the year for the most part are what are going to be included in uh, the property taxes for the year which does lead to the question from some people to say well what if I have more income this year than another year and I want to basically prepay my property taxes possibly as a way to increase my itemized deductions and lower my taxes this year, which means I won't have the property taxes in the following year. So you might say, what's the big deal? But if I had a lot more income this year than next year, my tax rate in brackets will be higher in the higher income year than the lower income year. So you can try to manipulate the cutoff dates that way. but you can't do that because well the irs is going to limit oftentimes so anytime that that idea comes up you got to think okay is the irs going to limit the amount of prepayments that i might be able to play with because i'm on a cash based type of system so beware of that normally it's going to be kind of a cash based system here and you're going to pick up the taxes that were actually paid in the current year okay and then so let's actually put that into our worksheet over here and just see how this might work I'm going to go to the schedule a and i'm going to say all right i had mortgage interest of 14,000. the taxes i'm going to say let's say this is the real estate taxes i'll say this is real estate estate taxes which i said was 4,000, and then i let the software do the calculation assuming because i haven't entered any other any other kind of tax so the software said well we're going to give you some tax and it's going to use the tables to calculate the 1017 tax of of the sales tax from in essence the tax tables so there that let's just take a look at that and then i'll go into that in more detail that adds up to the 1917 and that ties out to the 1917 here which pulls over to page one of the form 1040 100,000 minus the 1917 gets us to the 80,983 as we see here this pulls over to page one minus this gets us to 80,973. Now we're taking the itemized deductions as opposed to the standard deductions because it's a single filer, which is our 12,950. So we're taking the greater of the two with our max formula uh, there. So there is that. I'm not gonna get into the tax down below because we're mainly focused on this line right now, getting down to the taxable income. So if I go back on over on schedule one, then this box we have the state and local taxes on a state and local income taxes or general sales tax so remember the concept here they for some reason allowed state taxes to be deductible and they that was helping out the states that mirrored the federal tax system with an income tax so so that's a little bit easier to work with because now now you know what you paid for the income tax for the state that would be deductible on the federal taxes now remember the state government is different from the federal government the form 1040 here is calculating the taxes for the federal government if there was a state tax as well such as california then we would have a state tax tax return that we would have to do as we do the federal tax return they're different but oftentimes if there's an income tax system the state tax system will mirror to some degree the format of the federal tax system and you'd have to do those two things at the same time with the same tax software and that would help you to figure out the amount on schedule a 
because you would be populating into the tax software as you prepare both returns, the amount that you paid to the state. So it's a pretty, you know, pretty easy or a little bit easier to figure when you're when you're dealing with an income tax kind of system. Although it's still kind of confusing because you have those cutoff problems with regards to did they put the money in, you know, last, you know, the cutoff between when the when the amount was due on an accrual based method versus when you paid it. But and we're real, we're generally on when you paid it. We'll get into that more on that in a second. The sales tax then gets a little bit more complex because then they had to say, well, look, that's not fair to states that choose to have a sales tax. You're imposing a tax system on the states who are so supposed to be sovereign by giving preferential treatment to the people that have an income tax system and not a sales tax system. So then they had, instead of getting rid of deducting the state taxes altogether, they included the sales tax, which is a lot more complex because a sales tax means that you're basically calculating the tax on everything that you that you buy, right? So in, in order to not have to track everything that you buy to calculate the sales tax, there's these general tax worksheets for like the average tax. And if I go in here, you got the state and local taxes and there's some uh, worksheets helping us to calculate the tax. So here's the state and local tax uh, worksheet that's being used to calculate it. I won't go into it in depth, but that's the that's the general idea. So then the question is, well, do I want to use the easy worksheet to calculate the sales tax or do I want to do my actual sales tax that I paid? And if you're in a situation where you had uh, paid for large items, such as a car or a boat or something like that, it's quite likely your sales tax is higher than the average on the table and it might be beneficial to do the actual sales tax in that case and then we looked at all the rules in prior presentations on the tax rate you have to use the general rate and whatnot and so on so i won't go in that into a lot more detail but but that's the general that's the general idea now you also could have issues if you lived in one state for part of the year and another state in the other part of the year and there's a different sales tax for both those different states and you're trying to use the sales tax table and you lived part of the year in each state, then you'd have to use a ratio analysis to kind of allocate using the proper two tables and so on and so on. But this is being calculated by the table is the bottom line. If I, if I then jump to the sales tax and let's imagine that it was a sales tax system here even though i have a california i'm in california personally uh, so i usually would do the income tax even though we have a sales tax but usually we would do an income tax but because it would be higher for any case state and local ta sales taxes paid so if i go here and i put an actual amount of state and local sales taxes paid which we would have to track if we're doing this actual amount and let's say it was it was, you know, whatever, 3,000. And then I pull it back on over. So now it's being calculated at the 3,000 for the amount that I populated instead of using, you know, like, like being reliant just on the tables to do the calculation. Okay, so, and then, and then that would add up, of course, and so on and so forth. So, so then let's say, let's say that I was, had a state income tax system like California, has an income tax, which is often higher than the sales tax. So that would often be on your W-2. So when you enter the W-2, for example, for many people, you're gonna have the withholdings. So you might have the state tax withholdings that are on the federal tax return. So when I enter the state tax withholdings, let's say they were 2,500, let's say, then if I go back on over, now that's, being, now that's gonna be populated in my taxes here so i've got the state and local taxes at the 2500 so generally when you're when you're doing a tax return that has state tax preparation within it then usually when you when you enter the w-2 withholdings you're basically thinking of the withholdings on the state taxes in a similar fashion as being applied to the state return not the federal return so the thing that's usually in your mind is just like when you paid the federal income tax which is the same like on the w-2 here 15,000, you would think, well, yeah, on the 1040, that 15,000 is going to be on page two of the form 1040 as the amount that we paid. So I'm going to calculate the tax minus the amount that we paid. Same thing on the California return. 
uh, or any return that, that's an income tax system. I'm, I'm putting the withholdings in there so I can calculate the tax minus the amount that we paid in the withholdings. But then we have the added complexity of the amount that you paid with the withholdings for state taxes could be deductible on the federal tax side of things if you're doing an itemized deduction. So you don't get the benefit of that when you're doing the standard deduction, which is kind of annoying because it, again, it kind of benefits higher income individuals, which is a little funny, but it gets capped at the 10,000. So there it is at the, the 4,000 that's being uh, pulled in. So that's the amount that we paid. Now let's play with that a little bit. If I pull that full fat 4,000 up to very high income levels that have a high tax and I pulled it up to like uh, 12,000, then it's going to be it's going to be capped well the whole thing is going to be capped i got i got worried there the whole thing is going to be capped at the ten thousand now and that's that controversial law that came into play a few years ago where people were saying hey look you guys are really abusing the state tax thing because it helps out high income individuals low income individuals don't get to deduct any of the taxes because they're not itemizing now you're deducting the state taxes and you get this massive deduction for high in income individuals Plus, it's subsidizing states that have high tax rates and so on and so forth. So they capped it at 10,000. So it's a, that was a very kind of controversial thing. So now you have a situation where the, the state taxes are quite beneficial and often push people or help push people over to the point where they're taking this the itemized deduction versus the standard deduction. But you've got this this cap. So so then and that's not that high if you lived in a high cost of living state that you could be paying over 10,000 when you include property taxes on uh, the state and local tax. So that is a significant cap, which was controversial and interesting that they put that in. Let's put that back to 4,000. And also just realize that if you got a refund from, from last year that is, that is included in the current, in, in, in the current year, then uh, that means that you you could have got a deduction. This is this is where the deduction is at that we talked about on the income side of things. So in other words, in a prior presentation, we thought, do I have to include a state tax refund in the income line over here? Because they sometimes they give you a 1099 for it. That would be on the schedule one. And we're gonna, we said they got the taxable refund. Well, and we said, the only the only reason that you would have to include the refund in income is if you got a benefit from it last year so meaning if they had a schedule a like this in 2021 and they were able to deduct the 4000 in this case of uh, taxes they got a benefit from that deduction then and then the state said you paid me 4000 but i'm going to give you 2000 back well, that means that you didn't really pay 4,000 because they refunded 2,000. So what should you do? Should I go back to the prior year tax return and put only 2,000 here, which is actually the proper amount I paid after the refund was refunded back to me? That would be tedious to do, or we could do a cash-based system and try to fix it going forward. And that's why you might have to include in income the refund that you get in the following period. So that's going to be how that that uh, that kind of plays out. Now, remember that that does get a lot more confusing than you would think at first glance, meaning if you got a tax refund of two thousand dollars because you paid four thousand in the prior year, uh, then the question is, well, if you didn't itemize last year, then you didn't get any benefit and you wouldn't have to include it in income if you did itemize it's still questionable as to whether you've got a benefit from the taxes or how much of a benefit you got because notice that that my standard deduction right here is is twelve thousand uh nine fifty so what if my itemized deductions just barely cleared that what if the, my itemized deductions came out to be like thirteen thousand or something then I just barely cleared the 12,940. So even though I got a $4,000 state tax deduction and I was itemizing, I really only got maybe $50 of it, right? Because I because the 12,950 I would have gotten in any case. So it gets messy in terms so that's why the tax software is quite useful to determine 
uh, if you got a benefit in that case. And that's why I would suggest if you are dealing with a new client that had a Schedule A in the prior year, that it's worthwhile to data input the prior year tax return and the prior year software, even though it might cost more, roll it over so that the software can help you out with some of those rollover situations like uh, the, the refund situation. Now, a similar thing could happen for the other taxes, like the like if you had the sales tax, then you might have to include it in other income like down here if you've got a refund uh, situation for the other taxes that you paid. But that's a little bit more unusual of a situation. Now, you also might think, well, that would lead people possibly to try to, like you could try to say, if I had a lot of income this year and my tax bracket is gonna be higher, you could, you know, people may say, well, I'm gonna try to withhold a lot uh, this year so that so that my it lowers my income this year and I'll be at higher tax brackets this year because my income was higher. And then when I get the refund next year, I'll include it in income next year. And, and because I'm at lower tax brackets next year, it'll be a net benefit. People can try to play a little manipulative games like that with the cutoff and you got, and, and the reason that's the problem with a cash based kind of system. So you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be careful whenever that idea of that idea comes into play. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to prepay all my expenses this year or something. Sometimes the tax code will limit you in terms of how much you can kind of prepay, but it's, they have a little bit of a difficulty doing that with the state taxes because the state tax has a progressive tax system. So it's quite likely that people have no idea how much to pay for the taxes because it's a pay as you go system and a progressive tax system. So, so there's that. All right. And then we also could have included in here, you got to be careful of the cutoff kind of situations because if, if for example, I made estimated tax payments or, or say I got a refund from my state taxes last year that I rolled over. Roll over. Or into the current year because I'm a Schedule C business, then, then that is something that will typically be included in the taxes as well. So let's take a look at that. So if I had my estimated tax payments, so now I'm not having payments necessarily withheld from the W-2, although I still have those, but what if I need to make estimated tax payments? as well, which are often done with like a Schedule C business. If there was an overpayment applied from 2021 and you apply it then to the taxes, let's say it was another thousand, then that is going to be included in here as well. So now my state taxes went up to 5,000. So, so that's something you gotta, you've got to kind of be aware of uh, as well if you're not a W-2 employee or if you have the, the kind of cutoff situation between when you paid the tax and what year uh, it should be applied to. Also, if I made a payment in the current year for taxes that were for 2021 for prior year taxes, but I paid them in 2022, that may be included in the Schedule A because again, they're tied to generally a, a cash-based system when you paid them, not an accrual-based system when the tax year uh, that's being applied to. So for example, if you paid with 2021 state tax return, a thousand dollars, let's say, then that was applied to tax year 2021, but you paid it in 2022. So it increased my amount here by 6,000, by a thousand again to 6,000. So it's on, it's basically generally on kind of a, a cash based system. And again, if you're using tax software, it will usually help you to pick that stuff up but then you want to kind of double check it. If you're looking at this number and if it's, you want to say, how is the system calculating? Calculating results. That if it's coming from the sales, the, the, the taxes, your income taxes you paid for the state, then it would be easy if it just came from the W-2, but you also want to think about that cutoff kind of stuff. Did I have a refund last year? Did I owe money last year? If I owe money in 2021 and I paid it, uh, in 2021, then I, I paid for 2021 in 2022. When I filed the 2021 tax return by April 15th, 2022, then that might be included in here as well. And you want to get that, that kind of cutoff problem situated. So then you can have the personal property taxes. This is often with like the DMV, like vehicle tax and whatnot. 
and you've got to make sure that you take into consideration the the deductible part of the value of it so i'll just say 160 and pull that on over so that's going to be important it's usually going to be a relatively small of course in comparison to the property tax and the state taxes but could still be relevant worth picking up of course now the other thing to note is that something like the real estate tax for for example uh might you might have it broken out between multiple different areas so you might have like a schedule c and you might have your business use of the home which we'll talk about when we get into a schedule c type of business and then you might say well part of my property taxes is actually applied to the schedule c because i have a home office or something like that and therefore uh in that event oftentimes it's useful to apply what you can to the schedule c using a ratio analysis possibly using the square footage of your office compared to the full full square footage we'll talk about that when we get to the schedule c but the point is you can't double dip you can't take the portion of the property taxes on the schedule c and the schedule a you're going to have to prorate it in some way if you don't have any deductions on the schedule a because you're under the threshold to be able to itemize then any deduction you can get on the schedule c is obviously good beneficial uh if if uh, you can itemize then you're going to generally want to prorate it and take what you can on the schedule c and deduct here and then deduct the other kind of portion generally on the schedule a is how that could play out so that once again is another kind of area where if you have more complex returns they get they can get kind of messy because of because of all of the, these no one rules very complex but when you put them all together you can come up with these kind of uh, messy situations and breaking out the taxes and, and the same thing could happen with the mortgage interest down here between you know business related stuff for home office use and the schedule a can be a little bit messy but that's the general that's the general layout with the with the taxes